So I, my name is Jill Orhan. I'm the VP of Marketing and Strategy at Nixenta. And I am about a year old at Nixenta. I've been there since last October. And prior to that, I spent about 10 years in management and technology consulting, systems integration. So a lot of time dealing with CIOs and trying to understand what their pain points are. And when I first heard about Nixenta, which was probably a couple years ago, that's actually what got me really excited about the company. So in working with CIOs, I mean, CIOs obviously have a lot of pain points. And one of the things, thank you, one of the things that I, I notice consistently is that there's always this power struggle between the business and IT. And oftentimes, IT is losing. And that's because they, they have to run a complex environment, they have to keep the company up and running, and they've been asked to do it at very low cost. And so when the business comes to them and asks for information to try to improve how they're doing things, they don't really have the means to do it. They, they have scarce resources, they're running at full capacity already, they can't deliver. And so they start to lose the battle and again, things get more out of balance. So when you have software-defined technologies come into the picture, you have environments that are more flexible, they're more efficient, they're more manageable at scale, and after that the equation becomes really simple. So if you can free up resources to be more efficient, you can then become more strategic. If you can be more strategic, you have a competitive edge. If you have a competitive edge, then you can be more innovative. And so I think for all of us, you know, the reason to be excited about software defined is what we're driving innovation. And that's the real key component of what we do. So I'm going to call this my, my Captain Obvious slide, because I, I know you all know this. <laughs> you know, data is exploding. There's a lot of big trends that are driving it. Storage is exploding as well as a result. And what's happening? So it's like vendors are coming like sharks to chum, right? It's like they see that storage is this huge opportunity. They see that software-defined technologies are getting a lot of attention. They're jumping on the bandwagon, and all of a sudden, everything is called software-defined. And so why, why is this a problem? It's a problem because users aren't dumb. They, they know when they hear hype. <laughs> Most of them aren't dumb. <laughs> they, they at least know when they hear hype, right? And they hear the software defined term and they see that everybody's using it and they're like, oh, we're not sure if we can believe that this is real or not. So how do we tell the difference between the solutions? And I think there's a really, at the highest level, there's a really simple way to do that. So when you talk about software defined, software defined means it's hardware independent. It's independently developed, licensed, you can put it down on top of any kind of standard hardware. And that's what makes it hardware agnostic, flexible, and delivers the business benefits of software-defined technologies. If it's software-based, it means there's some kind of dependence on proprietary hardware. So it means that the vendor has taken away the choice of what hardware you're going to use. You could even say it's vendor-defined. And that limits the flexibility, it limits the innovation, and it also increases the cost, usually, because they're trying to you know, get an extra margin for the value of the software on top of their hardware. So when we say software defined, again, it's hardware agnostic, it's flexible, and it's aligned with the business requirements of the organization. And on a general basis, it's lower cost. So how does this translate? Jill, Go ahead, so Do I infer from the previous slide, you run on VMware, Hyper-V, and KVM? Is that what that box yes. on the right is saying? This is, no, these are the, so the, again, there's sort of a limited number of vendors that we would say fit in the software-defined ecosystem. Oh, okay. So these are sort of who, who we would consider to be in our, our bucket of software-defined solutions. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. So I'm going to go very quickly through the portfolio. You've got a lot of bright minds here in the room that are going to tell you the technical details about it. And so for those of you that have been around Nixenta for a while, you know that we've been around since 2005. Our flagship product is Nixenta Store, which is for unified block and file. We're coming out with a new release, 4.1. The big aha about 4.1 is that it's going to have all SSD optimization, and so which I think is really cool because basically you can get similar performance, similar cost to other flash vendors, but having a software-defined environment. And we also have our Nixenta Connect product suite, and so this is designed for virtualization. So the Nixenta Connect product suite is, um, delivers automation, acceleration of VDI environments, as well as analytics. And so we have a solution for VMware Horizon. We're coming out with one for Citrix Zen Desktop. And then some of you may have also heard about Nixenta Connect for VMware Virtual SAN. 
And so this essentially adds file services on top of vSAN, effectively making our, our product a, you know, a vNAS that enables file services for vSAN. The other two products that are going to be in release sort of first half of 2015 are Nexenta Edge. That's what this little asterisk is for. It's Nexenta Edge, which is our scale-out uh, object store solution. And this is really aimed at driving the next generation clouds. So multi-petabyte scale. This is a ground-up design from Nexenta. You have some of the folks in the room had a big part in it here today, so they're going to be talking about it a lot more later. Um, and we like to say that Nexenta Store has Nexenta Edge, excuse me, has you know ZFS DNA. It's really based on our, our experience with uh, with CFS and through Nexenta Store. And then last, you have Nexenta Fusion, which is the automation and orchestration layer that's going to sit on top of all of this. And again, this is where some of the power of software defined comes in: is that you get that single pane of glass to look over your storage environment and manage it. So that's a little bit about the solution portfolio. This is a little bit about who we work with and where we work. So we work with the component providers, with the server platforms, with the cloud platforms. You know, I know you can see the logos up here of who we work with in terms of our key partners. You know, we believe that part of having an open solution is having an op open partner e ecosystem as well. So I'm just going to touch on some of the announcements that we've made recently around some of these partners. Uh, talking about the uh, component players with Seagate, uh, some of you may have seen there was an article uh, this yesterday, I think, as well as an announcement at OpenStack around our support for kinetic drives with Seagate. Uh, for Dell and Supermicro with um, their recent announcements at VMworld Barcelona around, so Evil Rail obviously came out for you know, VMworld US. There's an announcement on Dell and Supermicro. They're obviously part of the Evil Rail solution that they are going to be bundling Nixent to Connect for virtual SAN uh, with their Evil Rail uh, products. We're also at OpenStack this week, which I'm sure a lot of you are, are tracking, even though you're here with us. Uh, we've had announcements there around Mirantis and Selenia. So Mirantis talking about our uh, certification of our Cinder driver or Mirantis OpenStack environments, and then also our partnership with Selenia, which is a, a software and services company that supports OpenStack deployments. In terms of where we work, you know, we, we work in all the industry verticals that you all are familiar with. You know, I think the, the one that's really important to note is cloud hosting. It, it's our largest, uh, largest customer segment. And they're important to us because the cloud hosting providers are really driving the next generation cloud. They're the ones that are really pushing and field testing the product and providing you know, input into our roadmaps and the features that we drive. So we, out of this, um, for these industry verticals, you know, we, we have about 5,500 customers total. About half of those are on the community edition, half are on the enterprise edition. And then the cloud hosting providers make up about you know, 1,500 or so of the, the enterprise customers. Can you just give a, a brief overview on the difference between the Community Edition and the Enterprise Edition? Certainly. So the, the Community Edition is a, it's nearly identical to the Enterprise Edition, but it's only an 18 terabyte license. And it's also without support. And there's no other major differences then? No HA. No HA. Yeah, no, none of the plugins actually oh, okay. work. No additional plugins, but other than that, it's the same OS. Yeah. High availability is a plugin, is it correct? Say that again? The availability part is a, is a plugin. Correct, yes. Yes, that's correct. It's a single controller. Correct. So that's a little bit about sort of the ecosystem that we play in. And I'm just going to touch real quickly on sort of the, the aha around the cost piece of it, which is we're, we're much more cost effective than other solutions. We're more cost effective than legacy storage. We're more cost effective than Amazon. And you know, if we look at list prices, which is where this data came from, it's up to 70%. In practice, we've seen it be up to 80%. And I think you know, that there's a whole host of benefits that come with software defined. But if anything else, these kinds of cost savings mean that companies should be looking at software defined solutions. So with that, I'm going to end the marketing segment of the presentation. And I'm going to turn it over to Oscar to talk a little bit about the products. Wait, wait a minute. You're, you're comparing Amazon with Nixenta here? Yes. But Amazon's actually providing disk. Is Extent of providing disk or just no, but we've so baked we bake the disk into the cost for what a what a standard um, we bake standard cost into this for hardware. So for the the Nixenta price here includes both our software and what's amounts to one of our reference architectures, which is basically with one of our part, kind of key partners. Their hardware cost for that, 
the Amazon cost not only includes the, the kind of the back end store, but also the transfer costs that you incur. For a reasonable workload, I'll give you that. We're actually being very conservative with the transfer costs. And what do those horizontal lines mean on the, on the bars? They're, they're different components of the costs. Like hardware versus? Hardware versus software versus transfer costs. Yeah. 